Houston, we have a problem. This kitchen hand mixer stopped working. Well, all it does when it gets switched on is okay, it's got a blinking screen, whatever that actually means. And and then nothing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now it works. Very interesting. I see. Now it works. Okay, so it's got some kind of contact problem, obviously. Which seems to work now. But it wasn't working just a few seconds ago. So I'm guessing something's wrong with either this crazy twisted cord or something's wrong inside. Either which way, and this is some special here. Let's see. I don't know if you can read that nameplate other than made in China. It also says model number something something, but it's ho I need a microscope to read that because the paper is curling up there, of course. And it says PC. PC would be the brand Penny something, I don't know. PC, whatever. It's kind of, the words are kind of missing from there. And uh, let me see my last attempt here to PC hand mixer model number yeah whatever unknown seat something so anyhow that's what we've got here so if I unplug it unplug it back in yeah it's blinking that kind of works alright it's got some contact issue alright let's try again Nothing, no picture, no sound. Wiggle the cord, switch it on. Okay. I pressed, I pressed this button. That, see, when I press that button, something makes contact. And then, and then the motor is not running. It's that, don't touch anything. All right, very strange. We'll take it up. All right, so it's been verified that the motor gets powered somehow when the uh, this bl the blades are being ejected when you press this button. So when you press that button, whatever motion is produced inside, it moves along some wires and some contacts, and then the motor runs. Uh, let's take it apart. All right, I don't know what I'm doing. So, but I see some kind of rubber, rubber things here that might, like one, two, three, four, they look like screw caps. Okay. Let's see what happens when I dig into it. Oh yeah, screw cap all right. That's how that, let's do again, so that's how that looks like. Let me get you some focus there on that one. Okay, let's do again. No. There, okay. Rubber cap. Alright, screw cap. And then a Phillips screw lives down there. Way down there. Okay. Well, this is uninteresting, so. Uh, just chill until I get to the screws and pull it apart. It's important to note right away that this is 250 watt motor uh, is what it's running on. So that's 2 amps, 2.08, whatever. And so what I'm likely to find inside is a bunch of plastic and the kind of thing my... Uh, my friend on his AVE channel digs up when he takes apart substandard equipment. I'm pissed off at the manufacturer already because what I'm seeing is, let me just see if I can, there, temper resistant screw head. You see it? 
it's got a little thing in the middle that stops the plain screwdriver bit just from uh, catching it so what I need to do and you know all four are the same tamper resistant there you know there's the next one so what I need to do is I need to modify this one with a zippy disk this is a zip cut disk that's thin enough and my modifying is gonna look like so I'm gonna do the best I can do for eyeballing it to be centered and make a little notch in that and what else I also need to do is of course it doesn't fit the hole because it's too chunky so I need to grind down on all six sides of the hexagon I'm gonna start with that of course and my handy dandy cutesy Bosch grinder let's go outside alright we're done with custom tool making and of course it's removing these tamper resistant screws successfully because the head although not entirely symmetrical but is good enough it matches the shape there that's close enough and what happened with the shank of this one I started just grinding off like a hexagon just hexagonal shape but then the corners were still sticking out so I took off the corners so it's not a hexagon now it's a 12 gun or dodecagon to be very technical but I left some of the original hexagon shape here because I wanted it to fit the screwdriver because now the new end of course just doesn't fit it and it spins in it because it's so much smaller you, you get the idea okay so I have a custom tool here that fits the screwdriver and removes the screws just like so. Super straightforward. I just need to I just need to get a few more out. Now that we have all four of these screws out with this custom bit, let's see what lives inside. Uh, yes, of course the missus first thought was Shall I go get a new one? Not happening. We'll fix it. It's not broken. It's just ooh, a little bit dusty. It's not broken. It just needs a little TRC. Okay. Let's see. We got a whole bunch of gears and stuff here. Hmm. How do we do this? Okay. Yeah. Alright then. Just give me a few minutes until I kinda clean it so we know what the heck we're looking at and why it doesn't work. It's dusty and dirty alright, thickly, even though I even though I cleaned it with an air compressor but it doesn't clean this kind of unidentified foot components or I don't even want to guess what that is but uh, needs a little better cleanup for sure and then we'll know what the heck is going on so going back to my original observations that the that the blade blade eject button made the motor run or or uh, yeah there was a contact error there there is nothing electrical here this is all just gears and and there's a blade that uh, a fan blade that draws in air to cool the motor and everything there's lots of this residue and dirt and whatever that has to that has to be cleaned uh, there's the, mo the commutator segment, there are brushes, whatever. So the only point of contact is there in the handle and this part just pops out just like so. It just snap fit with this little plastic latch there and it goes in there. So the only thing that it can make uh, ele that, that the uh, that movement in the blade eject button can interfere with 
is this one this is the main power button and it's just dirty there and how do we do this so you can see well anyhow it's it's dirty there so I'm gonna clean it take it apart and clean it with a brush the contact points I'm gonna have to uh, undo the screws so that's the only thing I'm gonna do just basically clean it the situation here unfolds we've got a bigger pile of mess we can take this to the sink and hand wash it I took the motor off it it was mounted with these four screws and some rubber mounts and the motor was of course incorrectly assembled into it these parts here were these that one there and another u-shaped piece further down there should be sliding in there between the two washers so that the vibrate so that the vibrating uh, vibrating motor base or housing is not directly in contact with the rubber dampener or this mini little rubber shock absorber there and I'm just trying to show you and uh, anyhow the shock absorbers are are worn uh, lopsided now because because the two washers were just sitting on top of the base uh, motor base castings as opposed to setting sitting in between these two washers so anyhow that's the story there for the assembly wherever it was made and assembled and it's a little cleaner it's I don't know about half a pound cleaner I don't know somewhat cleaner and this is how everything spins and looks now I meticulously cleaned the gears with toothbrush and uh, the other components there everywhere next up is I'm gonna have to clean the here are the, the switches are here these are switches mounted in the handle these micro switches and the little LCD so I'm gonna clean around this one as well although although the operation of these switches or per was perfect as they are powered through this little uh, cable harness which is plugged into the printed circuit board here and this printed circuit board is inside the machine here so it the, the operation of the switches were not affected by this glitch so cleaning is uh, I'm not saying it's not necessary but it's not gonna make it any better at the moment so but uh, I'll do that since it's since it's a part same for gears the uh, amount of dirt accumulated inside the gear or at the at the root of the gears or uh, gear cogs uh, is not affecting really how this one does uh, electronically but I just cleaned it anyhow and the flam fan blades yeah I know this is a $20 or whatever mixer and I'm spending uh, an hour on this already but uh, mm, buying a new one uh, still no I rather spend this or sacrifice this $2 uh, custom made tool that I had to make and yeah my time and my learning lesson is free all right is everything removed from the housing the motor with its main switch which is taken apart there's another bit a uh, bit of uh, circuit board and I took apart the switch that's how it looks like with its sp springs and contact surface let me just hold it there there yeah. it was it just snaps back together but I'm just showing you the switch there is pretty clean on the inside these contacts 
uh, they don't come off because this plastic has been uh, heat shrunk around it so no issues there it's actually built together reasonably reasonably yes the bearings are simple and the gears are plastic but you know it's a uh, and you know the wires and everything is small but it's uh, but it's holding all right okay other than this contact issue problem all right yeah. next thing we'll put the switch back together and fire this puppy up see what happens what you see here is the rubber mounts that are chewed up because the motor was incorrectly mounted so that's what I mentioned before oops I don't have new mounts and uh, I cannot really switch these around so it's going back this time correctly though all right I'm putting it through its faces I'm not touching anything it's plugged in what the heck is Maybe the cord? No. Well, it's the cord. Somewhere the cord is bad here. You can see that if I twist the cord, power is cut to the unit. If I turn it back on, everything otherwise, the motor, everything is functioning perfectly fine. But. Something is wrong with the cord somewhere here. Oops, somewhere here. You, you get the idea. Alright. So my next thing to do is where is the cord wrong? Or I can just get the soldering iron and just chop the entire length. That probably saves some time. Final conclusions here. I put it together. It's still it still uh, runs as it ran before so it's skippy it speeds up it slows down it speeds up it slows down so I untwisted all the twists from the cord so it's at least running in a straight direction it got better because there's nothing wrong with the motor there's nothing wrong with the bearings there's nothing wrong with the pin printed circuit boards there's nothing wrong with the switches everything has been cleaned the unit is not being powered evenly so as soon as I find an abandoned TV on the uh, on the boulevard you know on the uh, lawn I will harvest its power cord and then I can build in a power cord that hasn't been overstretched by repeated twisting and untwisting whatever in the meanwhile this will work as long as the cord doesn't get twisted up into an unrecognizable Gordian knot so that concludes repair and cleaning